Welcome to What is Truth? Brought to you by the Southern New Mexico Church of God in Las Cruces, New Mexico. What is Truth? is a weekly program which seeks to focus our attention on the truth of God's Word. Now, with this week's lesson, here's Pastor Meyer Spock. Welcome to the program. Suppose, I've got a question for you. Just suppose the Apostle Paul was resurrected. Now, he's been in his grave over 1,900 years. Suppose he was resurrected today. And he's wearing his white robe and he's going around and he's here in Las Cruces and he, he goes over to the mall and he goes into the mall and he sees this Christmas tree beautifully decorated and he hears this fantastic music coming out, uh, singing praises to God and, and he hears and it, the sights and the smells. And What would the Apostle Paul say? Now, Am I, am I uh, smart enough to know what the Apostle Paul would say? Well, only by his writings, only by the books that he wrote, that I could speak for the Apostle Paul. And also the writings and that we find that Jesus Christ wrote, that he, he uttered, the words that he uttered. So we're going to go to the Bible. We're going to look at Christmas the Untold Story. Now, it's taken from this booklet here. It's called Christmas, The Untold Story. And uh, we're going to ask the Apostle Paul what he thinks about Christmas. Well, before we do that, we need to look at some of his writings. We need to turn to the book of Acts while you're turning to the book of Acts, we have two important booklets that we'd like to share with you today. The first is God's Holy Days. Did you know that God has holy days that reveal his plan of salvation? He has seven of them. Seven holy days. Each holy day represents one facet of his great plan of redemption for all mankind. Now, the second booklet is, Why Were You Born? Do you know why you were born? And it says down here, Do you really know why you were born? Do you realize God has a purpose being worked out? I might add, right here below, most fail to understand that purpose. Read this booklet. You will be surprised. I can guarantee you'll be surprised. Each of these booklets would take you no more than 10, 15, 20 minutes if you're a slow reader. Read it along with your Bible. Whenever you read literature, biblical literature, read it along with your Bible to see if it's accurate. So you can have these free booklets just by calling the telephone number on the screen, and we'll be happy to send them to you. Okay, we're going to turn to Acts chapter 17. Please turn in your Bibles with me to Acts chapter 17. And we'll start reading in verse 16. So Acts 17 verse 16 says, Now while Paul, while Paul waited for them at Athens, so he's waiting in Athens, in Greece, his spirit was stirred in him when he saw the city wholly given to idolatry. And therefore disputed he in the synagogue with the Jews. He always went to the synagogues first. He always preached the gospel to the Jews first and then to the Gentiles. So therefore disputed he in the synagogue with the Jews and with the devout persons and in the market daily with them that met with him. So he's out there preaching the gospel to whoever would listen. Then it says certain philosophers of the Epicureans and of the Stoics encountered him. And some said, what will this babbler say? 
uh, other some, he seems to be a setter forth of strange gods. Well, he's talking about strange gods because he preached unto them Jesus and the resurrection. I guess they never heard this before. This was new to them. So they took him, they took Paul, and brought him unto Areopagus, saying, May we know what this new doctrine whereof you speak is. Tell us what, what this is all about. For you bring certain strange things to our ears. We would know, therefore, what these things mean. And it says here, For all the Athenians and strangers which were there spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear some new thing. So, Paul explains to them about the God of the universe, about Jesus Christ, and he goes on and we read in verse 22. Let's read it now with me. And it says here, Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, You men of Athens, I perceive that, that in all things you are too superstitious. That's the first time we find the word superstitious in the Bible. For I, as I pass by and behold your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God, whom therefore you ignorantly worship. Why, why did they have that? They had all these altars of various gods and they figured they would cover every base. And they, they, in case they missed one, they would, they would assign an altar to the unknown God so they wouldn't get the gods angry at them. Whom therefore you ignorantly worship, him declare I unto you. So he went right to this unknown God and he explains who God is. And he says here, God that made the world and the things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth and dwells not in temples made with hands, neither is worshipped with men's hands as though he needed anything, seeing that he gives to all life and breath and all things and has made of one blood, this is Adam and Eve, one blood, all nations of men, for to dwell on all the face of the earth, and has determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation. So, the, uh, so each country has its own language and has its own customs and traditions and so forth. That they should seek the Lord if happily they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. And let's just drop down to verse uh, 29. For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone graven by art and man's device. You'd be surprised at what people worship. And the times of this ignorance, God winked at, but now commands all men everywhere to repent. Well, he winked at it because of their ignorance. They didn't know any better. Now we're going to go to Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 12. Now, in Proverbs 14, verse 12, we find fourteen verse twelve we find this saying here that says very simply fourteen here we are, fourteen verse twelve. I'm sorry. I missed it. There is a way which seems right unto a man, but the end thereof 
are the ways of death. There's a way that seems right. We do things because we think that they're right and that's why we do them. You know, and everyone is like that. We, and we all have customs and traditions and many times we don't know where these customs and traditions come from, but we just do them because our parents did them, our grandparents did them, uh, our ancestors did them, and it, it comes down to us today to do them. Well, let's go to the words of Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 24. Going to his words. Now, Matthew 24 is a very important uh, chapter. And it says here in verse 2. Verse 1, we'll start in verse 1. So it's Matthew 24, verse 1. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See you not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. That happened in 70 A.D., when Titus came along with his legions and destroyed the temple and broke through the walls of Jerusalem and took the Jews out and took them as slaves. But this was about 31 AD. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of your coming and the end of the world? This word world is aeon, which means age. What would be the end of the age? The, and a new age would come along and you would come back and rule. Watch what Jesus says to them. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. He says this four times in this chapter to watch out for deception. Here's the second time. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. So this can be taken two ways. They would say that they are the Christ. They would claim to be the Messiah and deceive people. Or they would even say that Jesus was the Christ. Jesus was the anointed one and shall deceive many. So, we understand, we understand about deception. A person that's deceived doesn't know they're deceived. Because if they knew they were being deceived, they wouldn't be deceived. I hope you, you got that. I hope you understand it. Because a deceived person never knows he's deceived until he wakes up. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 10. Now we're going to talk to Paul here. We're going to ask him some questions and we're going to find out what he thinks of Christmas being the birth, celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ. We're going to Paul and ask Paul what he thinks about it. So now we'll be right back. Please don't go away. Living with diabetes and have Medicare or private insurance, here are some great news. Call United States Medical Supply today and we'll send you the smallest glucose meter in the world, absolutely free. It only takes a 
speck of blood, and it gives me my results in five seconds. And there's no coding for easier, more accurate results. Don't let diabetes get in the way of living. Give us a call today at United States Medical Supply and get the smallest meter in the world for free. Hi, I'm Joan London, and if you're worried about your parent or a loved one living alone like I was, and you want reliable senior care information, then call A Place for Mom, the nation's largest senior living referral service. With one phone call, you'll get free information on assisted living, Alzheimer's care, nursing homes, even important financial information. It's a free service, so call now. Call now, 1-800-908-0987. Get ready, America! The Affordable Health Care Act is here, and it's got everyone asking, how do I find affordable health insurance that's right for me? The answer is simpler than you think. Pick up the phone and call I Can Benefit right now. Waiting for you is a team of licensed insurance agents who understand health care reform and can help you find the right plan to take care of you and your family's health. Don't wait. Call now and get the answers you deserve and a price you'll love. Call toll-free 1-800-426-2163. When you have credit card debt, the debt suckers, high rate and high pay are everywhere. They're making another minimum payment. Great! Most of the money goes to us. One call to Consolidated Credit can get the debt suckers off your neck. And lower his rates. And consolidate his bills into one low payment. Consolidated Credit drives us batty. Call Consolidated Credit now. Cause debt sucks. Call now. Call Consolidated Credit at 1-800-530-4571. Call now. Welcome back to the program. Now we're looking at Jeremiah chapter 10. Now, let's say the Apostle Paul with his white robe, you know, dressed like a person would be dressed 1900 years ago. And he's walking around in the mall. People are looking at him and he's wandering around in the mall and he sees this giant Christmas tree, you know, all decked out, all beautiful, all shiny and he looks at it, what would he think? Well, he knew the Bible, he knew the Old Testament. Let's look at what he would think back in Jeremiah chapter 10. Jeremiah chapter 10, and we says here, verse two, thus says the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. For the heathen are dismayed at them. See, at the time of winter, at the time of the winter solstice, the days were getting shorter and shorter and shorter, and the people were thinking that the sun is dying, and they were they were sun worshippers. They would worship the sun, and it says here in verse three, for the customs of the people are vain, for no purpose. There, it doesn't work. For one cuts a tree out of, out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. They deck it with silver and gold. They fasten it with nails and with, and with har harmers that it move, hammers that it move not. See, they hammer it together. They are upright as the palm tree but speak not. They must needs be born. They got to be carried because they cannot go. They can't walk. Be not afraid of them for they cannot do evil. Neither also is it in them to do good. So there's no good that comes out of it. They can't hurt you, but they can't, they can't benefit you in any way either. So let me ask you a question. Uh, what, what does the Christmas tree have to do with the birth of Christ? Absolutely nothing. Nothing. Paul would look at that Christmas tree and he would say, Oh, these people are worshiping the solstice, the December 21st, the shortest day of the year. The, the idolaters and the people that were ignorant, that didn't know any better, thought that the sun was dying, it was shorter and shorter and shorter. And then after December 21st, the day started lengthening out. And by December 25th, you could see the result of the days getting a little bit longer. 
and the people were happy and they would celebrate and they would send gifts to each other. They would drink, they would have dinners, Christmas dinners. That, and this was done 2,000 years before Christ. That's right. That's, that's exactly right. Have you ever heard of Semiramis and Nimrod? Well, Semiramis was Nimrod's mother. And later on, as Nimrod came along, he married his own mother. Now, that sounds incredible, but it's true. He married his own mother, and he was killed, and she went out to the forest. And she came back and she says, I saw a tree that came in full bloom, full bloom overnight. It, was in a, it came out of a stump, a dead stump, and this tree came up in one night. And this was Nimrod that came back from the dead. He was resurrected as a tree. Now, I don't know if you want to believe that or not, but let's go back to the Old Testament and you'll see that, that, was, that people did worship trees. Let's go back to Exodus chapter 34. In Exodus 34, we'll look at verse 13. And here it says in verse 13, it says, But you shall destroy their altars. So when they came into the land of milk and honey, they were to destroy their altars, break their images, and cut down their groves. What's a grove? Grove is a group of trees. People came out to worship those trees. For you shall worship no other God. For the Lord, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous God. So he didn't want you to worship any trees. Now you might think, well, wait a minute, hold it. Who would, who would ever worship a tree? Well, they would come up to a tree. Have you ever... Would you, a camera? Have you ever wondered where this expression, knock on wood, comes from? Knock on wood? You ever wonder about that? Okay. It came from people who went to a certain tree in the forest, and they would worship the tree. And after they would give their supplication, they would ask their supplication, they would knock on the trunk of the tree. Now, if the tree knocked back, don't laugh. Please don't laugh because this is serious. If the tree knocked back, their petition was granted. Do you think Satan has the power to knock back? Do you think these people would be out there worshiping trees if they didn't get some of their prayers answered? Do you? Of course. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 12. Deuteronomy chapter 12, and we'll look in verse 3. Deuteronomy chapter 12, and here we are in verse 3. And you shall overthrow their altars, and break their pillars, and burn their groves, their trees, with fire. And you shall hew down the graven images of their gods and destroy the names of them out of that place. You shall not do so unto the Lord your God. God doesn't want people worshiping trees. And I know you don't worship trees. Nobody today worships trees. But they did. They did back then. Let's go to Judges chapter 7. Judges chapter 3. In Judges chapter 3, we'll look at verse 7. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and forgot the Lord their God, and served Balaam and the groves. Now, Balaam means God. Baal, Baal means God. Baalim is the plural of Baal. That means gods and the groves. They, they worshiped trees back then. These were Jews worshiping trees. Let's go to Luke chapter 2. 
we're, we're going to the New Testament. We're going to find out about the birth of Christ. And we'll look in chapter 2. Here we are in Luke chapter 2, and we'll look in verse 7. Here it is. And she, that's uh, Mary, brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in the manger, because there was no room for them at the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. Now, a lot of people just read over this. They were keeping watch over their flock by night. So they were out there in the field by night. Now, they did bring their flocks in. They brought their flocks in by the Feast of Tabernacles, which took place uh, late September, early October. They would never be there in winter time because that was the rainy season. So Jesus Christ could have never been born, camera please, they were, Jesus Christ could have never been born uh, at that time of the year, winter. He had to be born the latest. He could be born when the shepherds were out in the field. Paul knew this. He knew this, that they brought their flocks in by late September, early October at the very latest. Well, folks, we don't have any more time to tell you any more about this, but you're welcome to send away for these very two very important booklets, God's Holy Days, and the second booklet is Why Were You Born? Just call the number on the screen. We'll have somebody there to take your order. We'll send it right out. We have a Bible study, an interactive Bible study, every Saturday at 1 o'clock at 1701 East Missouri, you're all welcome. Bring your Bible, your notebook, bring your questions. We have questions and answers. We're happy to answer any questions you have. And until next time, this is Meyer Stahl of the Southern New Mexico Church of God saying goodbye, my friends. Listening to Ask What Is True Stall with the Southern New Mexico Church of God what? located in Las Cruces, New Mexico. For copies of today's lesson or for more information, call area code 575 650 7359. That's 575 650 7359. Join us next week at this same time for another edition of What Is Truth. We wish you God's Until next week. Blessings.